Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use lenses to build a microscope and a telescope. So, first thing to do is to learn about how we can safely handle our lenses without damaging them. So, let's have a look at our lenses. So, here we have our lenses and they're kept in pieces of paper to keep them protected. So, I highly recommend if you're going to pack away your lenses and not use them for a while, it's best to keep them in their little piece of paper so that way they won't get scratched. Now I want to show you how we can handle these lenses so we can avoid getting our fingerprints on them and avoid scratching them. So first thing I'd like to point out is I've got a piece of paper here, so it's good if you can put your lenses down on a piece of paper rather than leaving them on a hard surface where they might get scratched. That will help keep them in good condition. So I'm going to take out this first one. So what I'm going to do is just very carefully just keep my fingers around the rims of the lens rather than touching the front or the back bit. So. If we have a look, we just want to keep our hands around the edges, around the length of the lens, so that way we can avoid it being scratched. So I'm going to take all of these out. Now if you have a look, the different lenses have different focal lengths, and the easiest way to kind of tell the difference between them is that some of them are thicker than the others. So this one has a 5 centimeter focal length, and so we can see that it's the thickest. That one was a 10 centimeter. This one here is a 20 centimeter focal length. And this one here is the thinnest. This one is a 30 centimeter focal length. Now, all of these lenses are what we call biconvex. What that means is that they are curved, that they're curved in such a way that they're thicker in the middle and thinner around the edge. It's not so easy to see with this one here, but if we have a look at this one here, we can see the edge is a lot thinner and that the middle bulges out. What that means is they'll actually cause light to focus or to converge. So if, lens, if uh, light was coming in straight at this lens, it would all converge down to a point. And that's going to be very useful for us. So now that we know how to handle our lenses, the next thing I'd like to show you is how to figure out their focal length. Being able to find the focal length of a lens is important because that way if you accidentally mix up the packaging or you're not sure which one is which, you can figure it out for yourself. So in order to be able to figure out the focal length of a lens, you're going to need a few different things. The first thing you're going to need is a piece of paper and you're going to need the lens itself. So all we need to do to figure out the focal length of the lens is if I have something that's bright, so a window over there, something that's far away and something that's bright, so maybe you leave the door open and then you turn out the lights in the room. What will happen is if you take the lens and you hold it near a sheet of paper, you will be able to see that an image forms on it. Now that image could look blurry or it could look focused. When the image is focused, that means that the distance between the paper and the lens is the focal length. So I'm going to bring this one in nice and close. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. But, so, the image is in focus at about that distance there. If I go this way, it gets too blurry. If I go this way, it gets too blurry. Let's try that again. I'm going to turn the lights off in the room, and hopefully that will make it even clearer. So too close, blurry, focused, too far away, blurry. And so the distance, when that image is focused in there, that is the focal length. So without even using a ruler, I can tell that that's about five centimeters. So this is my five centimeter lens. If I try it with my 10 centimeter lens, then to be in focus, it should need to be further away. There we go. So that's focused about there. And if I was to use my 30 centimeter lens, there we go, that's in focus. So now that we know how to find the focal length of our lenses, I'd like you to take your five centimeter and your 10 centimeter focal lengths, and what we're going to do is use them to make a telescope. So to show you how to do this, I'm holding my five centimeter in my right hand, 
and I'm holding my 10 centimeter in my left hand. And uh, the way that you can build a simple telescope is you just, so you've got to choose, you're going to use one of your eyes to look at the telescope. So I'm going to close my right eye and look at it with my left eye. And I'm going to put the five centimeter focal length in close to my eye. Then I'm going to put the other one, the 10 centimeter focal length further away. And then uh, the distance between them needs to be about, well, it needs to be pretty much exactly the, the sum of the focal length. So this one's five centimeters, this one's 10. So that means they need to be 15 centimeters apart. So I'm gonna guess it's like that. And then I'm gonna look at something far away. This only works if you look at things that are far away. Now that's all blurry and not working, but there we go. I just move backwards and forwards. And once I get to there, I'm in focus. And now I can see things that are further away in the room and they look magnified. If you do the lenses the wrong way around, it's going to look smaller rather than bigger. Now, uh, one you'll notice when you do this, you'll see that the objects that you're looking at are actually upside down, they are inverted. So whenever you build a simple telescope with only two lenses, the objects are going to look upside down. Now, I've had a lot of practice, so I was able to get through and look and see something pretty quickly. I recommend that it might take a little bit longer for you um, because you know it's still new. And so that's why I'm recommending you start with your five and your 10 centimeter focal lengths. So I'll let you have a go at that now, pause the video, and then I'll show you what we can do next. Okay, so what we can also do is we can make the telescope more powerful, increase the magnification. To figure out the magnification of the telescope, so what you do is you have to, uh, to take the, the, the further, the, the larger focal length, um, so the objective lens, and then you divide its focal length by the ocular lens, the one that you put near your eye. So in this case, I'd get a magnification of 10 divided by five. And so in that case, my magnification is times two. So things look twice as big. If you wanna make a telescope more powerful, then what I could do is, instead of using my 10, I could use a 20 or 30 centimeter focal length. So I've got a five and a 20. So that should mean that the magnification should now be 20 divided by five, so four times magnification. Now, it will be harder probably for me to get it to focus and the distance at which I'm gonna hold the lens will be different. So now I have to hold this lens at five plus 20, that's 25 centimeters away from each other. So I'm just gonna guess that it's about that. If I have a look, there we go. Okay, so now things are a lot more zoomed in but I don't have as wide a field as view as before, but the magnification is quite impressive. You can also try it with your 30 centimeter lens if you'd like. So that would mean that you get 30 divided by five, that's six times magnification. Okay, so I've got it in focus. Now I just need something convenient to look at. So I recommend maybe set up a book or some words, a poster, something on one of the walls. So that way you can stand back at a distance where you are unable to see or read what's on that poster or in that book. And then you can see with your times six magnification, are you able to read it? So just to show you how this works as an example, you might be able to see on my wall over there, it's a long way away from us now, but I have a periodic table a periodic table of elements like you'd see in chemistry. And there's no way I can read that at the moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try uh, putting the lenses in front of a camera. So I'm not used to doing this with a camera. So it might take me a little while, but I'm gonna try and focus in so we can see that periodic table uh, using our telescopes. So this is what it looks like normally. If I put in just the close lens, it's going to look like that. And now I'm gonna put my objective lens in place. So if you have a look, that's in focus now. I can't quite read it, but it's certainly magnified. Now, if I move further and back, it goes blurry again, but I can get it just right and it's in focus. Still can't quite read it, but it's certainly much bigger than if I pull the telescope away. So that's the basic idea behind how you can build a telescope using uh, two lenses. Now, this telescope is slightly limited in that it makes uh, the images upside down. 
What I'd like to show you now is how we can use our lenses to build a microscope. So just before we build the microscope, I think that now is a pretty good time for you to take a break. Now, if you're like me, looking through the lenses for a long period of time starts to give me a headache. And so if you're getting a headache as well, it might be best to take a little bit of a break. Now, when you come back from your break, an important thing that you're gonna to need to be able to do a microscope or to use your microscope is you need something to look at. So I'm gonna recommend just get a piece of paper something that you can put down on the desk in front of you and that way you can look down and read it. All right, so take the opportunity to pause the video now and then after you've had a break, we can come back and learn how to build a microscope. Okay, so to build a microscope, it's a bit different to a telescope. Once again, I'm gonna start with my five and 10 uh, focal length, centimetre focal length. So I'm holding my five centimetre in my right hand and my 10 centimetre in my left hand. Now last time we put the five centimetre closer to our eye and the 10 centimetre further away. For a microscope though, we're going to do this the other way around. Now if you just take the single, uh, a single lens and put it over the paper, you'll actually see that you can use it as a magnifying glass to make things look bigger. And let's have a look. So if I take just the single lens and put it in front, you should be able to see that it can magnify the words so they look bigger. Now if I have it sitting directly on the paper, there's not much magnification. As I pull it away, I get more and more magnification, but eventually things start to go out of focus. They become all blurry. Chromatic aberration is causing the, uh, the weird kind of colors that you can see around the edge. So. Uh, how we can try and improve on this is we can take our second lens. So at the moment I've got my 5cm focal length down there. Now I'm going to take my 10cm focal length. So first thing I'm going to do is take my 5cm focal length to a spot where it's just uh, too big. Like the I can't see anything properly because I'm unfocused. Then I'm going to put the 10cm in place and it should become focused again. So, you might find that a little bit tricky trying to get your microscope to focus. I found it very difficult trying to get it on the camera where I couldn't actually see what I was doing with my hands. But, uh, after a while you should get it to work. The trick is, just make sure that you've moved your first lens far enough out of the way that things are out of focus, then bring your second lens into place to try and focus it again. So, if you've done that and you think too easy and you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, what you can try and do is build a telescope that has got three lenses in it. So, the reason why you might want to do that is if you just have two lenses like we were doing before, then the image is always inverted, it looks upside down. But if you get three lenses and you manage to line them up correctly, you can get an image that is not inverted, so it's the right way up. We call that upright. And so, to set up three lenses, I'm recommending be very careful, but if you can find a surface and maybe some blue tack and you can carefully stick them onto the surface, the right distances away from each other, then that way they'll stand up and you can do it with just two hands. Um, if we were at the university, we could actually get out some lens holders and we could show you how we could have a go setting it up on a proper optical rail. So I guess that's something to look forward to if you ever study physics at university. So, um, I hope that you've managed to do that uh, and successfully build your telescope and your microscope. Good luck building a telescope that has three lenses and produces an upright image. Bye!